So in this video, I want to look at what do I do to make it easier for my clients to use their website. I thought of this because someone asked a similar question in the comments of one of the videos I posted. So let's look at that question. So Hassan asked the question, hey, awesome tutorial like always, thank you. And thanks again. You know, it's it takes a lot to go into creating these videos, so I do appreciate the feedback. Um, but he asks, how do I create a custom client backend? I don't want a client to have access to the WordPress admin panel. Now, you can go about getting a custom admin done. You may have to pay a developer or so on. The easiest, though, is to customize the dashboard. And that's what I do. And that's what I want to look at in this video. Let's look at what are some of the difference between what the typical WordPress uh, login and dashboard would look like and what you could do with a little bit of tweaks with some elemental templates as well as some plugins that will allow you to add a white label. Let's look at that. Here is a typical WordPress dashboard. This is what you will normally see when you look to log into your website. But this is what you can create for your guests. So it looks a lot more customized. It's personalized for them. You have a background of their property, the logo of the property here, and you could change some of those details. So let's log in. So this is what you will see or what your client would see when they log into their dashboard. And this could be very confusing. There's a lot of details here. They have a lot of menus on their left. They may do something and mess something up. Let's look at what you can create. This is what you may want them to see. It is much cleaner. Most of the things are hidden. You have three options for them. And these are the three things I typically do in my hotel booking website. Add a new booking, check the calendar, or view your arrival. And But this is my admin backend. What if I wanted to just create something much simpler for the booking manager, the property manager? So if I go to the users, and I'm going to switch users, I'm going to show you how you could do that as well. So this is what it would look like for the property manager. On the left, you'll notice they have much less menus. They just have the booking option, the accommodation, and the appointment. And these options are linked to those areas. For, for example, if they wanted to go and see the calendar, if they click on view booking calendar, it takes them right there. Or if you go back to the dashboard and they wanted to view booking arrival, if you click on that, it takes them to the booking arrival that they could see that. I've also added a few more customization in the event that you are the developer and you would like them to get quick access to you. Then you could include your logo in the dashboard as well. So if they click on that logo, it may take them directly to your website, but that's just depending on how you want to actually configure the back end. But something like this is very easy to accomplish. And that's what I want to do in this video. So if that's something you're interested in, Please stick around and we're going to go through all the details step by step. So let's get into the video. So the first thing we want to do is download a plugin and we're going to go to, let's go to plugins, add new, and you're going to look for white label CMS. So that's this one right here. It has over a hundred thousand installs. Let's click on install and then activate. So we could then go to settings and then you will see the option here, white label CMS. Now you could include your developer details here, but I'm going to skip this for now since I want to show you the full details of this plugin. So a few things you could do. So for example, if you want to hide the WordPress logo and that's the WordPress logo that you're seeing here, if you click to turn that on, as well as you could hide the WordPress version that is being used. You could include a logo in the admin bar. So that's similar to what I did here, where I have my logo listed there as a developer. So if you want to do that, the way you will do that is click on upload and then you could upload your logo. And then I'll click insert into post. So that's my logo there. If I'm scrolling down, you have a side menu branding as well, where you could put a logo above in the side menu, but I'm going to leave that out. I want to save this and you will now see that logo there. But currently it's not linked to anything. So if you want to link that to a website, you could add that website right here in the admin bar URL. Once you've updated that, you could click save. So now if I click on this icon, it will take me to my website. Let's continue. Let's look at how we could customize the login window. 
Let's click on login. You could include a logo for the website that you're actually building. So if you go to upload and I could look for my logo and click insert. Now it's important to note that it's ideal for your logo to be 320 pixels as the max width. If you choose a logo that is much larger than this, it's probably not going to show the entire logo. So you may want to edit the logo to make sure that it's no longer than 320 pixels. So just select your logo. Again, make sure it's at least 320 pixels wide or no more than 320 pixels wide. And let's just choose insert into post. And as we scroll down, we could decide if you want to choose a retina version, which would be uh, twice as large. I'm going to upload one of those since I have one already prepared. All right, so this one is 640 pixels and I'll choose insert into post. Here you would specify your logo width uh, as long as it is, if it is not as large as 320, but I'll leave that blank for now. I'll come down. Here we'll choose a background image. So you could change the color, but in my case, I would like to use a background image and I'm going to use an image representing the front of the property. So I'm going to choose this image here and choose insert into post. I would like the image to be full screen. So I'm going to choose full screen background image and I'm going to leave the position as center center. I'll leave that as is. Now, do you want to hide a register or lost password or the back button? I want to keep mine. However, I'm going to want to change the color of that so that it is more legible on the screen. So I'm going to scroll down. We have here the back to register link color. So I'm going to choose that and I'm going to make mine white. So I'll select white and then I'm going to choose the back or register link over color. And I'm going to choose that to be white as well. And let's scroll down. There's an option here for a live preview. Let's click on it to see what it looks like. All right, so this gives us a preview mode so we could get an idea. So we're able to see our uh, lost or go to background. We're seeing the logo is looking good. So let's click on X and come out and I'm going to choose save. We could see that logo is now showing up here as well. As I said, so currently if we go to our dashboard, this is what our dashboard is looking like. We want it to look a lot of cleaner like this. So let's go back, go to settings on white label CMS. We'll go to dashboard. And do we want to have a dashboard icon or do we want to change the title of the dashboard? So we could say something like booking quick access menu. We also would decide, do we want to hide all the dashboard panels? And I'm going to choose to hide those dashboard panels for the different users that are there. And if I scroll down, now here's where it's going to give us an opportunity to customize our dashboard and cr to create our own custom dashboard. So you, you'll wanna choose the option here that says, add your own welcome panel. So when we select this, it gives us the option to do a basic HTML panel. You could have one with um, Elementor or Beaver Builder Pro. But in our case, we're gonna use Elementor. Now, we don't have an Elementor template done as yet, but I have created this one and I'm going to leave a link to it so that you could download it and customize it yourself. So I'm going to look at installing a template that I would have previously done. So I'm going to save it at this point. We'll go to templates and then we'll choose saved templates. You'll see the option here to import templates. And then you're going to select that template that will be in the link in the description below. And let's choose import now. All right, so we have the template here. Let's choose edit with Elementor. Now let's select the image for our hotel or company. On the left, we below image, we'll choose the choose image button. We can scroll down and look for our logo. So I'm going to select this one and choose insert media. You could adjust the size as you need to. So if you come to style, you'll see they have an option here for max width. And as you adjust that, it will adjust the size of your logo. You could also adjust the, the amount of padding to the top of the page so that it, it could be reduced or increased. You could play around with that so that you get it how you want it. And what we now want to do is to adjust our links. Now, these could be anything. Now, I only choose these three options because these are the three options I typically use in my booking website, which is adding a new booking, 
checking the calendar to see availability, or viewing all my arrivals. But if you want to add more, you could do so. But let's look at how we could get the links for that. I want to exit to my dashboard, but I'm going to open that in a new window. And I'm going to go to the first option that I want, which is viewing my bookings or adding a new booking that is. So I'm going to choose all bookings. Here's the new booking button. I'll just right click on it and I'm going to copy the link address. I'm going to go back to Elementor and where we have that new booking button, I'm going to link it to both of these areas. So where I have this icon box, I'm going to come on the left and below link, I'm going to remove what is there and paste that link that I copied. I'm going to do the same thing for the enter new booking button. You could change this label to be anything you want it to be by just changing the label here. So if you just wanted that to be something like booking or whatever you wanted to do, you could change the text there. But in my case, I'm just going to change the link and then I'm going to update that. The next thing I want to do is I want a link to my calendar. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I'm going to look at the link for calendar. So in the menu here, I could right click on calendar, choose copy link address. I'm going to go back to Elementor and where we have that icon box, I'm going to paste the address. And I'm going to do the same thing for the button, come down and paste the address. I also have a hover effect on this particular button. You could change those as well. You could go to style. You have the hover effect. If you want it to be something different, you could have come in the custom color or change it to something else as you would like. So as you hover over it, you'll see that color is changing. But I'm going to go back to the default that it was. Um, well, actually, I had a slightly different color. All right, so I will I will work with that. You will tweak it as you want it, but I'm going to leave it as that. I just want to make sure my link is there. And that's there. the last thing I'm going to do is add the link for the arrival. So if I go back to booking and I want to take that option for all bookings, I'm going to right click on all bookings and choose copy link address. Come back to Elementor. And for this icon box, I'm going to select the link area and paste it there. I'll do the same thing for the button. Come to that link box and I'll paste that address there and I will update it. You could customize this however you want. Maybe you wanted to add more buttons. Then you could have come and duplicated this section so that you have a separate section below that you could have added more buttons or change it. Maybe you wanted to add a video or something. You could have done so. But for me, I'm just going to leave these three options. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to update this. Okay, and I'm now going to go back to settings, white label CMS. And I could go back to dashboard. And I'll scroll down where we had the template. And I'm just going to choose my booking dashboard template. Now you have the option to show the title, but I'm not going to show the title. You could also give the person the option to dismiss this custom dashboard. I would like that to be unchecked so that you you must use this dashboard. It's already have what you need. So we're going to click save. Now let's test that by going to dashboard and we now have our dashboard here. We'll notice that we could dismiss this and even in the screen option, all those other options are now not there. So this looks much cleaner. If we test it, we could click on enter new booking. And we notice it takes us straight to the enter new booking option where we could search for our booking. If we go back to dashboard and we have the booking calendar and arrival. The last thing we want to do is to customize our menus. We don't necessarily want to show the client all these menus, especially if they might go in and mess up something as long as you're supporting it and they're okay with that. We could now remove the menus they don't need. We could go back to settings white label CMS. Let's go to menus and we could decide to hide menus for your client. Let's click that and we could decide that, look, they don't necessarily need to, to see the pages. We can hide the pages, fluent forms. We'll leave bookings, accommodation and appointments. So we could hide elements or templates, appearance, plugins. For users, we would like them to be able to view their profile uh, but if they're not necessarily going to be adding users or so on, 
then we could uncheck these options. Then I'm going to uncheck tools and settings. So we just want to ensure the core options are available to them. We could also decide if we want to uncheck some of the admin menus, but we do want them to see the calendar sync and maybe the, the comments and so forth. So we will leave those as is, but we could probably uncheck the new button to the top, but we could leave the comments there. Let's click save. Now for us to test this, we'll need to have another user and we want to have an option of how we could switch our users to be able to see that. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new user. So I'm going to go and click add new and let's create a new user for, or um, let's say we want to call it property manager. And we're going to say, we're going to generate a password. We don't necessarily need to send that to the client and we're going to let this be an administrator. And I'm going to click add new. I don't need to save that. But I want to be able to switch to a different user and test that. We're going to install a new plugin for that. Let's go to plugins. Let's choose add new. So you type user switching as the name of the plugin and it will be this one here. It has over 100,000 installs. Let's click install now and activate. Once you've done so, if you come back to users, we will see the option for the other property manager and we could click switch to. So now that we switch to this property manager, we'll notice that the menus are now customized. We have our custom dashboard. If we log out, we'll notice we also have our custom login page. We can now log back in. All right. So there you go. Now, if that was useful to you, please click the like button, subscribe and click that notification bell so that when I add more videos like this, you will be notified. It's quite easy to build a custom dashboard for your property, maybe for your client or even the website that you're building so that it's easier for you to maneuver or your clients. Of course, you could go and get a developer to go and build something custom. But as you could see, I've used all free tools it wasn't that difficult. I will leave a link to the template that I use in this example and you could customize it. A link to that will be in the description. Hopefully this was useful. I'll see you in the next one.